Hello again. Now, I was going to be have myself interviewed, but knowing my opponent's love violent tendencies, I thought that'd be a bad idea. You know. So, I decided to have it written down and do it myself. Have it sent to me. So, let's begin. But, what are your thoughts on your opponent? Alterado. This is going to be short. Alterado is a five foot nothing lucha fish guy who has some adequate talent. Um, I haven't seen him win. He's lasted longer than I expected, I suppose. Is he supposed to be a luchador? Like, if he's in a real ring, will we see untapped potential? Will he fly across the ring like nothing seen before? I know. Uh, he's probably going to be another disappointment like the rest. What can't be disappointing is the John Smith reveal, let's be honest. How would you describe your in-ring style? Good question, actually, for once. My style is pretty simple. I'm going to take advantage of your every weakness. I'm going to exploit every opportunity. Be that a limb, be that in the ring or out of it. I'm going to do what it takes. You know I'm a composite kind of wrestler. That's what I'm going to aspire to be. Every match, everything I observe, every counter, every maneuver, every strike, every grapple, every transition will be tailor-made towards you, my opponent, whoever that may be, and I'm going to break you down, fundamentally, piece by piece, whatever the expression you want to go by. But I, my style is not just a, like a lot of people. I'm not just going to copy some wrestler from my childhood. Like, really? No. I'm going to be the embodiment of the term wrestler. So yes, that would be my style. Simplified. But... What does it mean to be in a tournament to you? Now, the Cruiserweight division has always been a thing that's disregarded in many companies, despite it having some of the biggest talent. Think of Pac. Think of Will Ospreay. Think of Zack Sabre Jr. Think of Tajiri. Think of one of the greatest of all time, Chris Jericho. I believe he's two, two or five time, times cruiserweight champion in WCW. Think of Rey Mysterio. Think of Eddie fucking Guerrero. And then we have the audacity of the fucking belt to say tag team. Like, the lack of effort. Like, it's just, it's fucking... Honestly, kind of disgusting, to be honest. And the audacity of people like Kieran Hayes, like, disrespecting the belt. Come on. Like, of all people, you know, I think the only reason is he can't compete for it. For obvious reasons. <laughs> it's a division of some of, them, of the most talented individuals. And it truly... And someone like me is going to give it the respect and, you could say, honour that division like that deserves. A division that Connor Cage deserves. <laughs> so yes, that's my motivation. It's the hottest thing right now, in my opinion. You could disagree, but... Who's chasing after the UK belt? Who's cha Who the hell's chasing after the Intercontinental belt? Yeah, nobody. No one's chasing them. They're just being given. They're just being given chances. It's kind of a pattern that's been going around lately. 
We have 16 individuals chasing the cruiserweight belt. That says everything about it. Last one for now. What are your thoughts on the current cruiserweight champion? <sighs> hmm. What could be said about Remus Kane? He's a current Sheffield and Cruiserweight champion. Possibly uncrowned Intercontinental champion. But that's a whole different thing. Former 24 7 champion. He has much experience. He's shown he's willing to go where others will not. He's willing to be ruthless. Kidnapping DiCaro, breaking James Wesney's leg, attacking Side Splitter's partner right in front of him, power bombing Daniel Banners into the cold dirt, smashing a ch steel chair over Dylan Pickin and Banners heads over their lifeless bodies. I might be just touching the tip of the iceberg, to be honest. <sighs> but Ramus Kane has brought about a change. You could say a paradigm shift. Where things will never be the same. A new movement. A new change. A new era, maybe leader of the most dominant faction in SWF as well. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Change is the lifeblood of wrestling. We couldn't have stayed in 80s era, say your prayers and eat a vitamins era of Hulk Hogan forever. Think of the ruthless aggression <laughs> era, for instance. Think of Stone Cold's era. Think of WCW with Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Think of the change now of AEW. How that's changed the entire scene around. Or NXT. It's a change I first sensed a lot part when I was first being introduced. I talked to many people at that time, but there was an aura. It was a sense of unease, a sense things were off, things were different. The vibe was different, the way people's body language was. And I knew where that was coming from. And I came to Ramus Kane. And I asked him, what can I do to improve? And I was actually surprised he actually gave any advice to me at all. Be ruthless. <laughs> Look at what you want and take it. And at first those words didn't resonate. Until that battle royale, and I threw out the man who brought me into the company, who introduced me, Daniel Banner. And things changed for me. It was a sense, a feeling, like nothing before. Like, like I've just been going through the emotions this entire time. Like I've been going through all these worthless endeavors, wasted all this time. There is nothing like it. I was, and I knew, and those words resonated over and over. And I knew exactly what I wanted, how far I was going to go for it now, and now, Everybody is involved. 
we have new people coming in from <laughs> Rob Van Helsing to Harry Greenwood to Alterado. People are chasing titles now, no longer satisfied with the status quo. And here's me. Here's me on the verge of starting my reign. And Ramus Kane will try and maintain his. It's gonna be a struggle. It's going to be a battle. I think it's gonna be a war. Because both of our backs against the wall. <laughs> you have the experience and the skill. But you're gonna be in a fatal four way. This is going to be the test of everything I said. Everything I built towards. We're gonna be like two caged animals thrown against each other. With everything to gain. I don't have any allies. I don't have an Alliance 76. I don't have a society. I don't have a Trailblazers. I don't have a Demon Nation. <laughs> any friends I ha do have, I've alienated and estranged. It seems. <laughs> And especially after the Caro, I don't think anybody's trusting anybody quite the same again. But you've always had that. I won't have a manager by my side either. I certainly won't have a dark deity. My back is against the wall. All I got is all this dedication and ambition, everything I've trained towards. Every day, it's not, there's not been a time where I haven't thought about this match. <laughs> there is nobody that's more dedicated to the idea, more dedicated to this match. You won't find them. <laughs> you really won't. 60 seconds in every minute, 60 minutes in every hour, 24, every 24 hours, 86,400 seconds a day. Well, half a million a week. So much time. So much time. And I'm not gonna waste a second. Throw everything you have against me. Throw it all. I want the very best. And I'm gonna go against the very best. There's no other way. The reason because no matter what your tactics, you're the one who's most passionate about this. The one who's willing to give up the most. The one who's going to willing to do what it takes. That is why I accepted Connor Cage packed himself against this wall and he's going to do everything to break out of it. Fuck, I look forward to Wrestlepalooza more than anything in the world at this moment. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. You know what? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Interview over.